Welcome to this Excel video on the title of Gorgeous Graphs. This is essentially how we turn uh, an Excel graph, which by default looks like this from Excel 2013, into something that looks like this. So these are a selection of graphs taken from scientific papers. They're not uh, all scatter graphs like the Excel graph we're going to manipulate, but they do share some common features, uh, some much thicker border lines, lack of grid lines, um, and just generally looking a lot more bold and clear with bigger text size. So I want to show you how you can make your Excel graphs look gorgeous like these. Let's begin. So here we've got some data. This is a solid that's about to dissolve in water. The mass of the solid is given here and then the temperature change. So if we want to do a scatter graph of this, we can select the X values and the Y values. Press the control key there to highlight those two ranges. And then we're going to go up the top to insert into the charts, the scatter charts, the scatter. Now I would strongly recommend at this point we're going to move this chart to a new sheet which we're going to call chart 1. So here's the chart and that should look pretty similar to what I showed you before. Now the first thing we want to do is, is add a title. Here's the graph. So we're just going to call this something like temperature change when a solid dissolves. and you might notice at the moment that um, this the whole font and formatting of this is looking a bit naff. So let's show you how to change that. So if we click on here, we go to the home. Uh, we want to increase the font size. So we can just click this increase font size button and we'll just get that up to something a bit more acceptable. I'm going to change the font to Arial because I love Arial. Uh, you may disagree with me. Okay, what next? So at the moment we've got the title up here. The font is this sort of weird grey colour, so let's turn it into black. That looks a lot nicer. And then we thought we'd make the title bold, just because it's important. Now we want to add some axes titles. Uh, and in order to do that, we go to the Chart Tools uh, tab, and we go to Add Chart Element, we can add the axis title. So this is horizontal axis, which in this case we said was the mass. Grams. And then over here we want to add something, the vertical axis. And this one is one to watch because this is going to be the one which we said was the temperature change. Um, and we want to give that its proper abbreviation. So we want the delta symbol. There's two options here. I can either type a capital D and then turn that into uh, a delta um, by changing the font on that to symbol. And that gives me a delta. Or I can go to the insert menu and insert a symbol and find the delta from there. So now the font is still symbol, so I better change that back to Arial. And I've got something that looks good. Now I want to put degrees Celsius there. So I do an O for the degrees symbol, and then I want to make that superscript. So if I right click here, I can go to font, and I want to put that as superscript. And that, we've now got a nice looking axis title, apart from the fact that mass has got three S's. Okay, so we'll make those bold, so that's just going over them, bold, something like that. That is already looking better. Now, let's think about these axes. So at the moment, we've got a fair bit of white space that's just been uh, wasted here on these. So if we did want to change this, then basically anything to do with an axis, what we can do is just right-click on the axis and just get the Format Axis option and we get all sorts of options so here we've got an opportunity if we want to change this let's say we only want to go up to minus eight we can just put that in there and it automatically rescales it for us I'm going to leave it at the automatic setting um, but if you want to do that there um, now what else can we do we've got various options here I'll talk about the horizontal axis crossing in a minute we've got the labels here uh, so this is just the positioning of the labels I think they're fairly well positioned um, number is like the format of the number on the axis. Now at the moment I don't think we need this point zero here so I'm going to reduce that to zero decimal places and that's already looking a lot smarter. Now tick marks is essentially if we remembered what those gorgeous graphs look like. They often had these little marks here that are going off to the numbers just to show you where those numbers are. So we can add those here just with this tick marks option. Major tick marks, we'll put them on the outside and the minor type will also put 
on the outside. So that's looking already very, very nice. Now, at the moment, this axis is looking a little bit puny. It's a sort of grayish color. We want to make that black. So we go over here onto this option here, the fill and line options. We go to the line. We can change the line to a black color. And we'll put that up to a width of about two points. Okay, looking nice. Let's do a similar type of thing with the horizontal axis. Format axis. And we're going to, this time, again, put some tick marks on. We want them to be on the outside or the inside. But actually, the numbers here, we want the numbers to go above. So if we change the label position, instead of being next to axis, we're going to put that high the numbers go up there but you can alter that to various different options um, and the tick marks now we've put them to inside if we put them to outside they're going to actually point downwards so we want to go inside uh, and the minor ones will also go inside so that's looking nice the number we really don't need two decimal places there we'll leave that to zero and that's just cleared up a lot of space on the graph so now we're just going to change the fill options here sorry or the line options again we'll get ourselves a black line two point and we're looking nice now one of the things that looks a bit naff about this graph at the moment is we've got mass here but all the numbers for mass are at the top here so that's where we come back if we go into the vertical axis and we go to format that axis again this is where the horizontal axis crossing thing comes in option um, and so if we change that from being automatic to a value of minus 20 what's going to happen is this horizontal axis is going to cross not at zero but at minus 20. So let me show you what that does. It comes down there. And now that is looking lovely. The only problem is these numbers are now miles away. So if we make sure we've highlighted that axis, format the axis, we're going to come back here. And now the number, we're going to need to move. So it comes, sorry, that was label, positions high. Uh, if we put it next to axis now, that looks lovely. So that is looking brilliant. Okay, what are you up to here? Now, the markers don't look great. So let me show you the various options for those. So again, you right click Format Data Series, and if you go into the Fill options, we can affect the line if we want to put a solid line on. Uh, we don't usually do that on scatter graphs, we work with trend lines. See another video for that. Um, but marker here is the option. Now, my biggest problem with these markers at the moment is they're way too small. So if you go to Marker Options, you can increase the size to probably about 15 is what you want. So that's looking okay, it doesn't look great, so what can we do? Well, we can play with the fill, we can take off the fill, and that gives us some nice sort of hollow circles. Sometimes people like those. Uh, we may want to then make the line around them perhaps a little bit thicker. Maybe we just put that up to 1.5 point, you can see that's nice. And perhaps if we wanted then we could put another fill in them, perhaps make a nice red fill. Those are quite nice markers. Now one marker type that people might want to do is sort of crosses or pluses, so we need to take the fill off there. And then if we go to marker options, we can see down here this is a plus here. So that's the plus option. I'll just leave it on that for now. Okay, so our graph is looking pretty good. Um, the only thing we need to think about is these grid lines. Now most of the time, um, gorgeous graphs in papers don't have grid lines. If you ever need to um, read off values or something like that then you can alter the grid lines you can leave them on something like they are now you can also add extra ones if you go to the design tab add chart element grid lines you can put on some minor grid lines uh, either horizontal or vertical but i'll just take those off now imagine i want to remove the grid lines i can just go to the primary major ones and the primary major vertical ones we've got a nice clear beautiful background now often if you noticed on these graphs they've got a border going all the way around them so how do we do that well we click on the plot area again right click to format the plot area and we want a border that's a solid line and we can change the width of that to two to match the axis so there is a lovely looking graph that we've created now that was quite a lot of work um, to do that so how can we um, have an option for sort of saving this as a template and it turns out that you actually can do that in Excel so if we right click on here um, and then decide we're going to save this as a template then hopefully in a moment an option box will pop up and what we can then do is we save this as a template which we can then reuse on future occasions so I'm going to call this gorgeous scatter with no grid
will replace it. And then if I imagine I'm on this sheet here and I've got some other data, if I just select those data and now I insert, and instead of going to a, a normal scatter graph, I go to more scatter charts and then click on templates, then I can get something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, this is the one here. Okay, so now I've got a lovely looking scatter graph. If I move this into another chart sheet, it's already looking really, really good. Now this isn't quite, these data are actually spurious. If you're interested in changing that, you can just go to the select data option here. Um, but already that's pretty much looking around about what you'd want your graph to look like. Um, you just need to change some titles and you're away. So templates are a really good option. Uh, the other option is you could copy the graph and just change the data using the select data option. Okay, well that's how to make gorgeous graphs in Excel. Hope you enjoyed it.